From our scaling discussion, it is clear that shrinking MOSFET dimensions improve speed and density, but it also introduces new physical challenges. When the channel length becomes comparable to the depletion regions, the gate loses full control over the channel, leading to short channel effects. These effects cause threshold voltage variation, high leakage, and degraded device performance. In this section, we will look into the key short channel effects, their physical origins, and their impact on modern device design. Now that we have understood the fundamental idea of MOSFET scaling, let us move into the critical point where scaling begins to introduce undesirable effects, known as short channel effects or SCE. A MOSFET is considered a short channel device when its effective channel length, LEF, becomes comparable to certain physical dimensions of the device, specifically the depletion width of the source drain junctions or the junction depth itself. This is the stage where traditional long channel MOSFET assumptions start to break down. The two dominant phenomena driving SCE are carrier transport limitation and threshold voltage modification. Under short channel conditions, the electric field along the channel becomes very strong. A high lateral E field builds up between source and drain. This causes the carrier drift velocity, VD, to approach saturation rather than increasing linearly with field strength, which directly affects current drive capability. The second effect, which is often more critical, is the variation of threshold voltage, VT. As the channel length shrinks, the influence of source and drain depletion regions on the channel potential increases. This effectively lowers the threshold voltage, meaning the device can turn on more easily, but at the cost of increased subthreshold leakage currents. The combined result of these phenomena is that the device no longer behaves according to long channel theory. Instead, we see higher leakage currents, degraded electrostatic gate control, and ultimately reliability concerns, especially in deep submicron and nanometer technologies. These issues are central to why short channel effects remain one of the most challenging aspects of CMOS device design. As we continue into device scaling, one of the most critical challenges we encounter is what we call short channel effects. Now, a MOSFET is considered to have entered the short channel regime when its effective channel length becomes comparable to certain fundamental dimensions of the device. Specifically, if LEF is of the same order as the depletion width of the source and drain junctions, or if it approaches the junction depth, then the device no longer behaves like a conventional long-channel MOSFET. This transition gives rise to two key phenomena. First, the limitation on carrier transport. As the channel becomes extremely short, the lateral electric field inside the channel rises sharply. With this strong field, the drift velocity of carriers no longer increases linearly with the field. Instead, it tends to saturate. This saturation of drift velocity reduces the carrier mobility and current driving capability of the device. The second important phenomenon is the modification of the threshold voltage. In short-channel MOSFETs, the gate loses part of its control over the channel charge because the influence of the source and drain depletion regions becomes significant. This results in a reduction of threshold voltage as the channel length is reduced, which directly impacts device reliability and increases susceptibility to leakage currents. Together, these effects cause the device characteristics to deviate from the classical long-channel theory. In practical terms, we see increased off-state leakage, reduced drive current control, and degradation in overall device reliability. These issues highlight why understanding and mitigating short-channel effects is absolutely central to modern MOSFET scaling and advanced CMOS technology. Now that we have established how short-channel effects emerge when the channel length becomes comparable to the depletion widths or the junction depths, let us move forward to a very critical manifestation of these effects, velocity saturation. As the MOSFET channel is scaled down, the electric field inside the channel does not remain uniform. In fact, for the same applied drain-to-source voltage, the effective lateral electric field increases significantly because the distance over which the potential has to drop, namely the channel length, has reduced. This higher electric field tends to accelerate carriers more aggressively. In long-channel devices, we assume that the carrier drift velocity is linearly dependent on the electric field, which is the basis of the classical current voltage equations we often use. However, in short-channel devices, this assumption no longer holds true. Beyond a certain field strength, Electrons collide more frequently with phonons, impurities, and even other carriers. These collisions act as scattering events that prevent carriers from gaining indefinite acceleration. As a result, the carrier velocity reaches a limiting value, often referred to as the saturation velocity, wasat. At this point, the relationship between the applied field and carrier velocity becomes nonlinear. Increasing the drain to source voltage further does not proportionally increase the current, because the carriers cannot move faster than this physical velocity limit. This is why the drain current tends to saturate earlier compared to long-channel behavior, even at relatively lower voltages. To capture this effect more accurately in analytical models, the effective mobility of the carriers is expressed in a field-dependent form. One commonly used model modifies the electron mobility term as depend upon n, eta, e, as depicted in equation, 
where eta is an empirical fitting parameter that accounts for how rapidly mobility degrades with increasing electric field. Thus, velocity saturation is a central factor in short-channel MOSFET operation, directly impacting the drive current and limiting the performance gains that scaling was expected to provide. It also marks the departure from traditional long-channel equations, forcing us to use more advanced models for accurate prediction of device behavior. Another important short-channel effect that severely impacts low-power operation, the phenomenon of subthreshold leakage. In the ideal case, when the gate to source voltage VGS is less than the threshold voltage VT, the MOSFET is supposed to be completely turned off. In such a situation, no inversion layer should form in the channel, and therefore, there should be no conduction between the source and drain. However, in practice, this behavior is not perfectly abrupt. Instead of a sharp transition from off to on, the inversion process happens gradually, creating what we call the weak inversion region. As a result, even when VGS is below VT, a finite drain current still flows. This current is referred to as the subthreshold current or subthreshold leakage. It arises due to the diffusion of minority carriers in the channel and its magnitude increases exponentially with VGS. Mathematically, this current can be expressed as ID's proportional to EXP, VGS minus VT, divided by NVTH, where VTH is the thermal voltage and N is the subthreshold swing factor. Now, as MOSFET dimensions continue to scale down, this leakage current becomes increasingly significant. This is because the reduction of threshold voltage, which is necessary to maintain high drive currents and fast switching, inherently lowers the barrier for carrier injection in the weak inversion regime. As a result, leakage power becomes a dominant component of overall power consumption, especially in modern nanoscale devices where billions of transistors remain in standby mode. Therefore, subthreshold leakage is not just a minor deviation from ideal behavior but a fundamental design challenge. Controlling it requires innovative device engineering techniques such as multi-threshold CMOS, body biasing, and the use of high-K metal gate stacks. Later, we will also see how architectural and circuit-level techniques are employed to mitigate its impact in practical VLSI systems. Another very critical aspect of MOSFET scaling is the reliability of the gate oxide. The gate oxide, typically silicon dioxide, functions as an insulating barrier between the gate terminal and the channel region. However, as scaling progresses, the oxide thickness, denoted as TOX, is reduced to just a few nanometers. While this scaling improves gate control over the channel, it also introduces severe reliability challenges. In ultra-thin oxides, the growth process often becomes non-planar, leading to weak spots in the oxide layer. These localized imperfections act as vulnerable points where the electric field becomes highly concentrated. As a result, the oxide can suffer from premature dielectric breakdown, which drastically reduces device lifetime. Moreover, when the oxide is extremely thin, very high electric fields develop across it during device operation. Under such fields, electrons can tunnel through the insulating barrier. This happens through two main mechanisms, fowler node tunneling, which occurs at high fields, and direct tunneling, which dominates when the oxide is extremely thin. Both these tunneling processes contribute to gate leakage currents, increasing static power dissipation. Over time, energetic electrons penetrating the oxide create localized damage and trap states, which further worsen leakage. If the degradation continues, the oxide can form continuous leakage paths eventually causing a gate-to-source or gate-to-drain short circuit. This is a catastrophic failure mechanism because the device permanently loses its insulating property and can no longer function properly. So, while scaling of TOX is essential for achieving higher performance, it pushes the oxide very close to its physical limits, making it one of the most critical reliability bottlenecks in modern MOSFET technology. This is why the industry has moved towards high-K dielectric materials to replace CO2 in advanced nodes, which we will see in later discussions. Now, Continuing from our discussion on oxide breakdown, another critical reliability issue that arises in deeply scaled MOSFETs is hot carrier injection, often referred to as HCI. When we reduce geometries and simultaneously increase doping densities, the electric fields near the drain region become extremely strong. Under these high field conditions, electrons, or in some cases holes, gain significant kinetic energy. These highly energized carriers, called hot carriers, can be accelerated to the point where they actually surmount the energy barrier and get injected into the gate oxide. Once injected, these carriers may become trapped in the oxide, which leads to the accumulation of localized charges. This trap charge alters the electrostatics of the device, resulting in threshold voltage shifts, reduced channel mobility, and overall degradation in current drive. Unlike temporary fluctuations, this phenomenon introduces permanent damage to the oxide, as the injected carriers effectively modify its insulating properties, almost as if the oxide has been doped to behave like a weak conductor. This makes hot carrier injection a major reliability concern in nanometer MOSFETs, especially because it progressively degrades the performance over time, 
shortening the effective lifetime of the transistor. Therefore, modern device engineers carefully optimize channel doping, drain engineering, and oxide materials to mitigate this effect. Now that we have understood the reliability issues inside the transistor channel such as hot carrier injection, let us shift our focus to another critical reliability problem, this time in the interconnects that carry signals and power across the chip. This phenomenon is called electromigration. As we continue scaling down the width of interconnect metals, the current density in these wires increases drastically. At these elevated current densities, the conducting electrons are not just carriers of charge, they actually impart momentum to the metal ions in the conductor. Over time, this momentum transfer, combined with diffusion effects, causes metal atoms to gradually shift from their original positions. This atomic movement creates two types of failures. On one hand, the migration of atoms can leave behind voids or holes in the interconnect path. These voids interrupt the continuity of the conductor, leading to an open circuit failure. On the other hand, displaced atoms can accumulate and form hillocks, which may extend outward and accidentally touch an adjacent trace, resulting in a short circuit. Electromigration is especially problematic in advanced nodes where interconnects are extremely narrow and current density is very high. It has become a major reliability bottleneck in nanometer VLSI designs. To mitigate this, engineers often use special interconnect materials, barrier layers, and carefully optimized current limits to balance performance with long-term reliability. So, while device-level scaling challenges like hot carrier effects degrade transistor characteristics, Electromigration represents the interconnect level challenge that can ultimately threaten the lifetime of an integrated circuit. Continuing from our discussion of short channel effects such as threshold voltage roll off and drain induced barrier lowering, let us now move to one of the most severe phenomena, punch through. This effect becomes prominent as the channel length is aggressively scaled down. Normally, the source and drain junctions are separated by a sufficiently long channel and the depletion regions around them do not overlap. However, as the device dimensions shrink, the depletion regions from both the source and the drain can extend so deeply into the channel that they actually meet. This merging of depletion regions effectively bypasses the gate's control over the channel. Instead of carrier transport being controlled predominantly by the gate voltage, a significant diffusion current flows directly between source and drain once a certain drain voltage is applied. This makes punch through an extreme manifestation of channel length modulation, where the channel no longer shortens slightly. It practically collapses. From an electrical perspective, this condition results in a very steep rise in the drain current IDs with increasing VDS far beyond the expected saturation behavior. In other words, the device loses its ability to maintain current saturation and instead, current continues to increase almost uncontrollably. The danger here lies in the fact that the rapid increase in current is accompanied by strong electric fields. These fields accelerate electrons to very high energies, which not only increases hot carrier effects but also risks permanent damage to the device through oxide degradation or even physical breakdown. Therefore, punch-through inherently limits the maximum operating voltage of scaled MOSFETs as beyond a certain threshold, the device cannot operate safely. To mitigate punch-through, advanced device engineering techniques are employed, such as introducing channel engineering with retrograde wells, lightly doped drain extensions, and using high-k dielectrics combined with metal gates to improve electrostatic control. In FinFETs and gate all-around structures, the improved gate control significantly suppresses punch-through, which is one of the key reasons why such non-planar devices have become dominant at technology nodes below 20 nanometers. So, punch-through essentially represents the point where electrostatic integrity is completely lost, marking a critical limitation in MOSFET scaling, and it highlights why innovative device architectures became essential in modern CMOS technologies. Now, continuing from our discussion on punch-through, another closely related short-channel effect that becomes increasingly dominant as devices are aggressively scaled is drain-induced barrier lowering, or dibble. The essence of this phenomenon lies in the weakening of gate control when the channel length is reduced without proportionally adjusting the source and drain regions. In such a case, a high drain voltage penetrates deeply into the channel, effectively modulating the potential barrier that the gate is supposed to control. What happens here is that the drain electric field induces additional carriers in the channel, creating a parasitic inversion layer. This unintended inversion interferes with the desired channel formation controlled by the gate. As a result, the effective threshold voltage is reduced, since now it requires less gate voltage to invert the channel. The drain is already contributing to the inversion process. This lowering of the threshold voltage not only shifts the IV characteristics of the MOSFET but also introduces significant subthreshold leakage currents, even when the device is supposed to be in the off state. Practically, this reduces the device's noise margins and degrades overall reliability. In advanced nodes, Dibble becomes a major concern because it can cause considerable drain leakage, increase standby power dissipation, and severe performance limitations. To mitigate Dibble, techniques such as lightly doped drain extensions, 
optimized hello implants and advanced device architectures like finfets and gate all around fets are employed these approaches improve electrostatic control of the gate ensuring that the drain field influence is minimized thus while punch through is an extreme case of barrier collapse dibble can be viewed as a more subtle yet equally critical reduction of the barrier that compromises the gate's control and overall device integrity now let us see how short channel effects alter the threshold voltage itself in a long channel mosfet the depletion regions extending from the source and drain are relatively small compared to the overall channel length their boundaries remain almost rectangular which allows the gate to maintain full control over the bulk depletion charge extending continuously from source to drain in this case the threshold voltage we calculate from long channel models is fairly accurate because the gate dominates the electrostatics however as we move into short channel regimes the situation becomes quite different here the depletion regions of the source and drain expand and occupy a significant fraction of the channel length instead of being rectangular they merge in a trapezoidal fashion effectively reducing the channel length that is under the gate's control this geometric change in depletion regions causes source and drain diffusions to induce additional charge in the bulk as a result the gate does not need to supply as much depletion charge as predicted by long channel theory what follows is that the long channel expression of threshold voltage actually overestimates the gate's control in practical terms the threshold voltage in short channel devices is significantly lower than that in long channel devices of similar dimensions this lowering of vt directly impacts device operation leading to higher sub threshold conduction and increased leakage current therefore the effect of short channel length on threshold voltage is one of the key scaling challenges in advanced cmos technologies since it reduces the threshold margin that designers rely upon for reliable switching continuing from our earlier discussion on how the threshold voltage is impacted by short channel effects let us now refine the understanding mathematically in a long channel mosfet the depletion charge supported by the gate is estimated quite accurately because the depletion regions near the source and drain are small and remain mostly rectangular in profile however when we move to short channel devices these depletion regions expand overlap significantly and take on a trapezoidal geometry this geometrical change leads to a fundamental difference the bulk depletion charge in a short channel is actually smaller than what would be expected based on the long channel assumption to correctly represent this the threshold voltage expression is modified instead of a direct long channel estimation we write the threshold voltage as the long channel value reduced by a correction term represented as delta vt0 this delta vt0 specifically accounts for the charge difference between the rectangular depletion profile of long devices and the trapezoidal profile seen in short devices practically what this means is that as channel length decreases delta vt0 grows larger causing the effective threshold voltage to drop further below the ideal long channel prediction this reduction is critical because it not only shifts the operating point of the mosfet but also complicates the design of circuits where precise threshold control is essential such as in shrum cells or analog front ends therefore Understanding this correction is key to modeling short channel mosfets accurately and predicting their behavior in modern nanoscale technologies. Now that we have understood how short channel effects modify the threshold voltage in the length dimension, let us extend our focus to the width dimension of the MOS transistor, which gives rise to what we call the narrow channel effect. When the device width, denoted as W, becomes comparable to the maximum depletion region thickness, XDM, the MOS transistor behaves differently from conventional wide channel devices. This is because the edges of the channel are no longer isolated instead they are influenced by the presence of the field oxide commonly abbreviated as fox which extends laterally around the channel region due to this overlap a shallow depletion region develops under the fox covered area unlike in a wide device the gate terminal in a narrow channel mosfet has to support not only the charge in the central channel region but also the extra depletion charge present at the edges consequently the gate requires a higher voltage to invert the channel and this leads to an increase in the threshold voltage relative to a large area transistor an important point to emphasize here is that the extent of this threshold voltage shift is not a fixed quantity but rather depends on the exact shape and distribution of the depletion region for example if the depletion extends more triangularly near the fox the effective charge supported by the gate will be larger than that in a purely rectangular depletion region thus in narrow channel devices the design trade offs become critical although narrow transistors help in scaling and packing density they bring along the penalty of increased threshold voltage which can affect device performance leakage control and even matching properties in analog circuits this is why modern mosfet design not only considers short channel effects but also takes into account narrow width effects when optimizing transistor characteristics in deep submicron technologies